Today's video will demonstrate the test-driven development process. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. Test-driven development departs from the standard development methodology in that we write the test first. This allows us to make sure that every single line of code we write is validated with a unit test. This video will demonstrate that process. In order to understand the test-driven development process, we first have to review the traditional development process, in which case we start by getting the requirements, design for the requirements, write the code, and when we're finished with all the code, then we test. But the question is, what happens when the tests don't work? Is it a little bit broken? Maybe we had a problem with our code. Maybe it's very broken. We didn't have the design right, or maybe we're really not even sure how it's supposed to work. The problem is there's often a large gap between when we find the problem in the test phase and when we introduce the problem. The test-driven development process is a little bit different. Here, we get a requirement, we write the test requirement, we write the code for that single test, and then if that doesn't work, we just keep going and to get the code to work. The test-driven development process works a little differently. First of all, we get a single requirement, we write tests for that single requirement, and then we write the code for that single requirement. Once that works, then we go back and get one more requirement. And so the time between our code being working and fully tested is measured in minutes, not measured in hours, days, weeks, or even months. Let's take a close look at the process. We're going to start the process, and we're going to get the requirements phase. This means we're going to do the requirement solicitation, talk to the client, find out what's needed. And then we're going to subdivide the requirements, and then we're going to sort them from the easiest and most independent to the largest and most complicated. And then we're going to get the top requirement off the list, the easiest one. Is the list empty? Well, we already finished everything, then we're done. And if not, then we're going to write a single test. And then we want to run the test, and this involves running the test. And if there's a test pass, well, that's probably a problem with the test. Namely, the test either didn't get run correctly or it didn't catch the, the test case we were looking for. Perhaps it's already implemented, in which case we're going to get the next requirement and begin the process again. Or if the PAT test did not pass, then we're going to write the code. Then we're going to write just enough code to make this test pass. Does the test pass? If the answer is no, then we're going to keep back and writing the code again and again until we get that test to pass. If the answer is yes, then we're going to go into the refactor stage. Now we're going to create a backup of the code that already worked, and then we're going to refactor. We're going to try to make it more maintainable, make it easier to understand, more efficient, whatever the metrics are. And we're going to run the test again. Does the test fail? Well, don't fix the code, go back to your backup, and then start the refactoring process again. If the test does pass, then we're going to go back and get a new requirement. And we're going to continue this process until our list of requirements is empty, in which case we're done. To demonstrate this process, we'll start with a problem called word wrap. Here's a problem definition. All text presented to the user must be word wrapped. This means that white spaces are appropriately turned into line breaks in such a way there is no more than length characters on a given line. This length value will depend upon the amount of real estate available in the interface. This word rack functionality must handle tabs, every eight characters, and other non-printable characters. So the first step is to subdivide this into a set of requirements. And here's our collection of requirements. Notice these are not sorted. I'm going to need to sort those before I begin a test-driven development process. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is create a unit test class to test this program. Now I'm going to enumerate all the different test cases that I want to run. Okay, now that I have all my test cases, I want to order them from the easiest and most isolated to the most difficult and complicated, because I want to do the easiest ones first. Okay, now that I'm finished reordering them, I can now write my first unit test. Okay, so let's see what we did here. We have an input string. We have the expected, which I'm gonna verify, and then we're gonna call word wrap. We're gonna word wrap at 10 columns. All right, but when we run this program, we expect it not to compile because we don't have a word wrap function yet. And sure enough, that's true. So the next thing we need to do is actually write the minimal code for word wrap that will make this particular unit test pass. Well, first I kind of want to make sure that my unit test even gets run, so I'm going to try that. Okay, let's run this code. When I run it, 
And when I run it, I compile this time, but my assert didn't fire. Why did my assert not fire? Oh, it's because my unit test code was not actually hooked up. So now I got to hook it up. Now I expect it to fire. Let's see if this happens. Again, it didn't fire. Why is that? Well, because my test code is not hooked up. So I actually call my test code from main, and now we expect my cert to fire. Yes, it fired. So let's go through the trouble of actually implementing this code. Hmm, it succeeded, but I don't exactly have an error, a message telling me I succeeded. But also the next step is to refactor. So let's do a bit of refactoring here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a comment in front of my function comment block. Okay, don't forget after you refactor to run your code to make sure all your tests still pass. And now I get a success message. We're good to go. All right, let's take a look at my next test case, a space we converted to a new line before the line length um, exceeds length. Okay, so I need to create a unit test for that. And to do so, I'm gonna copy my old unit test code and modify it to meet my purposes. Okay, I've created my unit test. Notice how I have my input. Uh, these would be the first line, then I expect a new line before the Bs, and this would be my second one. Okay, let's run the code to see what happens. And I expected to fail, and it did fail. And if I take a look at my debugger, we can see that I put the new line on top of a B rather than on top of a space. In other words, I need to be more clever. I gotta find the nearest space to where that column and header needs to be. So let's write the code to make this work. Looks like I had an error in my test where I put the new line in just the wrong spot. Let's run that again. Okay, now I'm successful. Now, just because my tests have passed does not mean that um, the code is finished. Now I need to refactor. Okay, and now as I refactor by putting good comments in, I properly label my variables. I didn't modify my length variable. I was kind of treating that as an index when it's really not. Um, and I've added some asserts to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Let's run the code to see if it works. And success, excellent. All right, let's take a look at our next requirement. The text may need to have multiple lines. Hmm, so let's add a unit test to handle that case. Okay, I have my unit test finished. I'm gonna have, um, so the first line is A's, the second line will be B's, then C's, then D's, then E's. Um, no more than four in length. So I'm gonna have to put a new line here and here and here. And sure enough, that's the case. Uh, let's see if this works. I expect my test to fail. Sure enough, my, my uh, test failed. So now I have to write the code to make it so it succeeds. Okay, let's see if this works. All right, succeed. Now notice what I do is while true, I'm gonna keep going as long as I'm not off the end of my string. If I'm off of the string, I'm gonna break, and then I'm gonna do the same logic I did before, which take my column length and kind of walk back, and then insert a space. Okay, now we succeeded, but my style is really bad. This uh, break in the middle of a while true, ugh, that is disgusting. Let's see if I can do a better job than this. Okay, I completed the refactor. Let's run the code to see if it works. It works, all the tests pass. Notice how I'm just using a while loop to go through all the different columns and still backing up to find the last space and I'm inserting the same as before. Outstanding, we're finished. All right, it's time to do the next one. What if there's already a new line in the text? All right, so we have to create a unit test to handle that case. All right, let's take a look at this case here. I have a new line, I have a new line, then I have no new lines, I gotta put just one right here. 
let's see if this works. Oh, I forgot to actually rename my, my test. Okay, let's run it. I expect it to fail. And I did in fact fail. Um, so it looks like I did not notice the new line was there and I put one in a funny place. So we better go write some code to make this true. Now, the first thing I had to notice about this is I can't start at the column number and work back because there might be a new line anywhere between. So I have to totally rethink my approach. I have to start from the beginning and move forward. So let's write the code and make this happen. Okay, so let's see how we're going here. I'm keeping track of the last space that I encountered and the length of the current line. I'm gonna go from the beginning all the way to the end, making sure I haven't missed anything. If I have a new line, I'm gonna reset my current line length. If I have a space, I'm gonna remember the last space. And then if my current line is longer than the length, I'll put a new line at the last space and I'll recompute the length of my line because I might have um, put the last space before my current location and set my index to my last space to be zero. All right. Let's, uh, let's run this code to see if it works. All right, it worked. Now let's see if I can refactor it to make it better. A couple things I don't like about this. Um, notice how I'm checking my text of I several different times. Maybe I can use a switch case statement. Okay, I'm gonna do two tests here because the refactor is kind of a bit here. First of all, I did a switch case statement rather than um, if else, if else. Okay, now that we've successfully passed our tests, um, we can move on to the last one. I'm not gonna do that. I think that's enough for demonstrations purposes, but each one of these, I would create a new unit test to exemplify this particular test case. I'd write the code, refactor, and continue, continue until my function is done. You can learn more about the test-driven development process in the test-driven development chapter and example 26.1 in the software design textbook.